You asked for it, so here it is. My GH6 Rig of Joy. Be prepared to watch the most B-roll you've ever seen in your life. So why did I get my rig in the first place? It was to use my cine lenses properly with follow focus. And that very simple task soon grew and grew into the monster rig, and I'll explain why. Also, not sponsored, I used all of my money for all of these parts. I made many mistakes along the way, so learn from my mistakes so you don't have to. So the parts. The actual cage itself is the small rig black mamba cage for the GH6 and it comes with the top handle. It's very light, it fits like a glove and I really enjoy that you just need to screw in one little screw and everything fits and works perfectly and it's nice and secure. I was a bit concerned that because I have a peak design clip on the right hand side of my camera that it would interfere with the cage but it doesn't, I can keep both. That's how it connects to your camera, at the bottom and at the side. And there's a cute little Allen key thing underneath that does both of these things. First, I bought the extra base plate and the elongated rail because I thought I needed to and I really didn't. And all it did was make the whole system a little bit heavier and a little bit higher and a little bit harder to balance on a gimbal. So first mistake, I bought this piece and literally don't need it. And I'll put the small rig part numbers up throughout the video so if you want to find them yourself you can and I'll link them below. When I put the follow focus on I was a little bit disappointed at first because you have to turn it for a blooming age to get from one side to the other for lenses with longer focus throws like the Maker Cine lenses which is what I was using. However, after going through many many forum searches I found a solution and that was to buy a bigger cog. So this is the part number for the bigger cog. I recommend buying both because sometimes you want more precision, sometimes you want more ease of use. So both is always good to have. With the larger cog, it's very easy to use and it doesn't annoy me half as much. The follow focus itself is very smooth. You can set your own A and B points. And you also have like this extender bit, which I've ended up taking off to make it as minimal as possible. In terms of where I've connected it, it's to the left on its own little NATO rail onto the black mamba cage. It also comes with these set of teeth thingies. <laughs> So you can use it with lenses that don't already have the teeth built in and you can buy more of those from small rig as well. On the bottom of my cage, rather than having that chonky base plate, I just put my Arca Swiss quick release plate, which I use on my Xeon gimbals, and all of my tripods are Arca Swiss as well. So once I take off the handles and bits and bobs, I can move it very quickly and keep it in the cage from the gimbal to the tripods and it works very well for my system. So after I bought the follow focus, the first thing I bought is the left handle. And I love the left handle because it can do this. It's the best thing ever. And the benefit of this is when you tilt it forward, it makes the follow focus so, so nice to use. It gives you something to lean on. So you can even just use your fingers for the follow focus or your full hand. And I don't know if it's because I have tiny little hands or if, I don't know, but I've seen other people just lean on the follow focus without this and I just can't do it. The, the footage is all over the place. And because I'm a wedding photographer and I like to do things more handheld, I needed to be able to use my follow focus handheld. I mean, on a tripod, you could get away with it because you just, you know, you just turn the dial and it's fine. But I needed that extra support and stabilization to use the follow focus smoothly. If you have larger hands, you might get away with it. I am not so lucky. And then I thought I was done. Mission accomplished. I can now use my follow focus. However, the whole rig was quite left heavy. So then I invested in a right handle. <laughs> So I really, really begrudged buying this handle. It is not cheap and it's wooden, got annoyed having to buy this. And then when it arrived, it is literally my favorite part of the whole rig. The wood is so ergonomic and the record button is so, so handy. It means you can keep your hands in place without having to touch the camera at all. I unboxed this in front of my husband and I told him how much it was and he was like, he was picking it up and he was like, why on earth have you paid so much money for this hunk of, oh my God, <laughs> you know, it feels so good in the hand. It really does feel so ergonomic and beautiful to use. So just a note on the uh, record button it will record if you attach the cable to the camera and it comes with those cables but it will not half press to focus as I'm using cine lenses I can't do that anyway but if you are wanting to use autofocus with this it doesn't do it to my knowledge it only presses record 
it attaches to the cage with the stupid little rosette connector. And I really think that the cage should come with at least one of these because so many of the small rig attachments need this connector. So you have to buy that bit separately for this to attach. The plus side of this is you can also change the angle of it. You can't do it as quickly as the left handle because you have to unscrew it and screw it again. So if you want something that's leaning a little bit more forward, you can. I like mine upright and it does leave a little bit of gap between the cage and the handle so you can sort of cable manage in between very neatly. And speaking of cables, another thing that I bought is these teeny little tiny cable tidy things. And I found that I don't really need to use them unless I'm using my monitor, but they just kind of screw on wherever there's space and then you can clip down your cables as you're needed. You know, you do end up with cable jungle. So these cable ties are very, very handy. For my monitor setup, I have the small rig friction mount which is brilliant you just sort of set the tension that you want and then you can move the monitor however you like and it stays there without having to screw or unscrew anything my monitor is this one it's good because it's very affordable i like the five inch size it's just not great for one reason <laughs> and it's such a superficial reason but here we are your UH6 and now your S5 now has a lovely red record box whenever you press record. So it's idiot proof. If you look down at your little screen and you see a big red box, you are recording. This doesn't translate to my monitor. I believe it will translate to some, like maybe some of the Ninja monitors. So if you do know a monitor that's five inch and has that feature, please let me know in the comments below because I do need to get one. So when I'm using the monitor, I'm looking at the monitor, I press record and go, am I recording? And I check the back. <laughs> I'm so used to relying on the red box. Might be user error. However, I do like the monitor for the focus peaking functionality. So if you are shooting in a bright day, it's very, very good to make sure you're nailing focus, particularly if you're using manual focus lenses. The downside of all of these monitors is the battery solutions. I have the NPF batteries. I've got tiny ones that last about half an hour and then I've got big chunky ones which last a little bit longer but still they just weigh everything down it's so top heavy when you use the heavier ones so short of getting sort of different batteries and, and changing my power solutions I do find the monitors a little bit of a faff depends on the shoot if it's sort of a corporate job and it's sort of you know I'm shooting for an hour it's no problem I need to change the battery ones if I'm shooting a wedding and it's like 10 hours long then Sometimes I'll just get bored of the monitor and whip it off and just rely on the back screen. Now the GH6 screen flips out, which is perfect for using this setup because I've got the handles either side and I can just look down at the monitor and it's great. And the focus peaking is very bright on the screen as well. I had absolutely no problems just using the built-in screen rather than a monitor during the recent wedding that I shot. You may have noticed the omission of a matte box. Now I may buy one in the future for different circumstances, but for my weddings primarily I quite like a little bit of light getting into the scene and I think it looks quite artistic. It isn't a look that everybody wants so if you want to make sure you don't get any glare or flare, my accent always sounds weird when I say those words, <laughs> definitely get a matte box. I think they're like 99 quid and then you control whatever glare you have to come into the lens. Me, I kind of like rocking it without to be honest. If I can give you one tip as a seasoned small rig faffa is get the blooming multi-tool that they sell. It's dead cheap and this is the reason why. This at the end of all the things I've bought is all the different bits and bobs you need to take things apart. It's just a pain in the backside. If you lose any of these, you are screwed, my friends. So get a multi-tool, stick it in your bag, and then you know you've got every tool that you need. There are some handy dandy places in the rig where things are hidden. So you've got the little key at the bottom and then you've got a wrench inside the left handle, but it's still not enough. That doesn't cover everything that you need. So definitely, definitely, definitely get the multi-tool. So one secret added benefit of this cage rig is something that I really didn't anticipate. And particularly because it adds weight to the unit, obviously. It is so ergonomic and lovely to use. I no longer get those niggly little achy pains during a wedding day. I get my claw hand quite often because I'm just holding in the same position all blooming day. So the ergonomic right handle really clears that up. It's such a joy to use. And you know, I'm, I have a bad habit of like leaning forward, using my back and not my knees. So the top handle really helps when I need to get lower shots. And the weight of the whole rig means that those are quite smooth anyway with the GH6 stabilization. If you are someone who does have a, 
longer day of shooting, I can highly recommend a rig provided it's not massively heavy. Just because I feel like everything is so ergonomic and lovely to use, it does make the whole day feel a breeze. Really? I love you it. You look so relaxed holding it as well. I'm not, I've not even got backache. Like at this point, I'm usually in bits, but it's proper good. I look at one another and grin and guffaw. Oh yeah, you know, you know. <gasps> Just <laughs> <laughs> so what was the total cost of my rig with mistakes? I have no idea, so this will be a surprise to me. So that's about the cost that you can expect if you buy all these bits and bobs. You may need some bits, you may not need others, but as you can see it's not really a cheap sort of thing to get into and it's not really something that you can half do. Like. Once you buy one bit and it goes in this direction, you have to sort of balance it out with this bit and you're gonna want the whole thing ready to rock. So those are the costs and those are the benefits and the pros and the cons. Another con is you've got two options at the beginning of a job. Either you set it up at the start of the job or you have it pre-set up and then it won't fit in any bag on the planet. <laughs> so I, for weddings at least. If I was doing like a studio job, I'd probably take the time to do it when I get there. But I pre-set it up and just use it like a blooming handbag. <laughs> I walk around with it and I strap it into the car seat beside me when I'm on the way to job so I can pick it up and go. Taking the handles off in order to get it onto a gimbal is very doable, but it does take a little bit of extra time. So just make sure that you uh, sort of account for that during your shoots. So any advice for people who want to buy their own rig and get into it? I would say measure twice, cut once. Definitely watch a lot of videos and make sure you definitely need that specific part before jumping in. Because sometimes you can spend 30 quid here, 40 quid here on things that you might not need or might not need yet and end up buying parts that you don't need. So do your research and, and definitely plan it out thoroughly before you begin any questions at all let me know in the comments and watch this video next if you haven't already this is the wedding i shot using the rig for the first time and i really think the footage came out awesome